going on everybody welcome to mid card mania i'm daniel steven and uh yeah kind of a special night because you know what first episode yep. our very first episode yep. and uh you know what we're hitting a big and we're going to the very first wrestlemania wrestlemania one and uh you know what i'm not calling it wrestlemania one what are you calling it it's wrestlemania no That's one called right. it no one that year was like this is wrestlemania one it was just yep. wrestlemania uh, WrestleMania. WrestleMania. And the and the match we're gonna be covering is Intercontinental title, Greg Valentine. JYD. With uh well he's got Jimmy Hart in his corner going up against Junkyard Dog. That's right, JYD. And uh yeah, you know what it's kinda cool that you know this is the mid card mania and the very first match we're hitting is an Intercontinental title match. That's right. Fitting. It really very is fitting. So alright, so you know what? Let's jump right into it. Let's do a little background first. Uh tell us a little bit about Greg Valentine Greg, before this match. Okay, Greg Valentine uh beat Tito Santana for the Intercontinental title. Took that strap from him early on. Early on, uh, what about JYD? JYD was was pretty much undefeated. Undefeated coming into this thing, so it makes sense that he would get a title shot. I guess yeah. so. It makes sense. All right. Well, you know what? Let's get into the actual match. Not a lot. It was a short match. Uh, it did, but it did go back and forth. Uh, any highlights pop out to you? Uh, the one when Jimmy Hart got knocked off the apron. Oh shit, dude! I will say the sickest bump of the night probably was Jimmy Hart because he's up there. He gets good. Well, you know, JYD's got him. Hammer comes from behind. JYD sidesteps. It hits Hart. Hart falls back, and that's concrete. Mm -hmm. This is this is re this is real. None of that you know fucking foam mat bullshit out there. Yeah, no, that's you know, concrete as fuck. I was gonna fuck. say something about there was there was there was no blue mats around. No, the no. Mat. Well, concrete. you watch a lot of these old pay per views. You know, whether it's WWF, uh, NWA, or even AWA. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was like the real deal. Yeah. The concrete. You know, wood steps going up to the ring. You know, and that plus, big and, metal. And plus, the mats, the mats weren't 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 really all that soft. There either. you go. Yeah. So I mean, it literally. You know, I mean, it was it was real. It was it, it's a sport back then. Exactly. So uh, so yeah. After JYD takes that bump, uh, let's or not JYD. Sorry, Jimmy Hart. Uh, let's get to the finish of the match. Go ahead. Throw, throw it the out finish, there. Finish. Um, the finish was. It wasn't. It wasn't the one. Wasn't the one. I wasn't the finish I seen. Mm. But it was. It was Tito Santana coming out, and well, you're getting the first finish first. Okay, I'll give I'll give you guys. Yeah, he just he, he just gonna blow the the whole ending here. My bad. Spoiler uh, alert for those who've uh, never seen WrestleMania uh, One. Uh, uh, well, <laughs> Greg Hammer Valentine had JYD stacked up, and he put his feet on the ropes. Whoa! One, two, three, undefeated streak over yeah. until until Tito Santana comes out and pretty much. He knocks him out. Well, he, he, he rats him out. Let's rats, just be he, real. He points out to the referee that that Greg Valentine has feet on the ropes. So referee restarts the match and starts counting Greg because Valentine's on his way back to the locker room. He's he's done. He won to his To be medal. honest, to be honest, I thought Greg was gonna get back into the ring, to be honest. And then guess what I happened? Guess he played the punk card. I guess he said, This match ain't worth it. I'm just, I got my championship belt. I'm gonna go back I'm gonna go back to the locker room and get me a shower. So Junkyard yeah. Dog wins the match, but does not win the Intercontinental title. Nope. So uh, let's talk about a little bit of the fallout here. Now, after uh, this match, uh, Greg Valentine would actually go ahead and give Tito Santana a rematch. Steel cage match, and Tito Santana would take it back. Uh, oddly enough, ironically, we're going to just kind of shift gears for a second here, because I tie it back in at the end. Uh, the U.S. Express, who fought uh, Sheik and Volkov on the same card, they lost their tag titles to them. They would also regain their tag titles later on down the road. Now, why that's important is because Greg Valentine would team up with Brutus Beefcake to form Dream Team. Dream Team. And they would go ahead and uh, take the tag title <laughs> straps off of the uh, U.S. Express. But didn't, they, but didn't they change the U.S. Express... They changed members because I think Barry Windham went back down I to the NWA. No idea. And I think Danny it, Spivey became no idea the new blonde guy. I guess could be. I I really don't know. I, this is all like between the pay per view, so I I didn't watch a whole lot of the wrestling TV shows back then. You're very it very well could be. I didn't get to. I I didn't have the luxury of pay per view. I just mm. mainly just watched the TV shows. Um. So then. Junkyard Dog, what would he go on to do? Junkyard Dog went on to win the Wrestling Classic. Man, went in there. First major, you know, pay-per-view tournament. JYD wins it. Yep. So let's get to the let's get to the review. Let's get to what we thought of this match. Now, yeah. I'm not gonna lie. This match is actually better than I remember. If you would have asked me before I rewatched this just recently, I would have been like, it was one of the worst matches on the card. I would have, you know, bring my mouth about it. After rewatching it, I will say it's better than I remember it. 
Once again, they didn't have much time to do much. Now, the one thing you always hear that, you know, JYD wasn't the best worker in the ring. Now, Valentine could work. That guy could work forever. But I don't think JYD could actually last that long in the ring. I mean, he got gassed out too early. So I think that, that match was designed so he wouldn't get gassed out. So I, I get that. My big complaint with this match and uh, kind of the events around it, like what could have been, I guess, A, the finish. Let's just be real. I don't like the finish. There are ways you could have easily done. Cause I mean, I get it. They're trying to protect JYD. You know, he's undefeated going into this match. So they're trying to protect that, but they don't want to take the strap off Valentine. I'm like, there's so many ways you could have done that. You could have had them both brawling outside, and then JYD just have to slip in before J uh, Greg Valentine does. Boom! There's your count out finish. Mm -hmm. Doesn't feel as screwy or whatever. It's like, all right, well, it happened. Uh, you could have done DQ. You could have Valentine give himself DQ. JYD still wins, keeps his undefeated streak. Valentine keeps his title. I, mean, I just feel like those ways could have been a little bit better, a little bit more of a payoff. But the thing that really irks me, because once again, this did not make Junkyard Dog look good. Like, it's the weird thing, is 85 was a very good year for the Junkyard Dog, yet he doesn't quite get it. Like, okay, he wins, he wins an IC title match. Does not win the belt, right? So, okay, he goes on to win the Wrestling Classic and doesn't do shit after that. The guy he beats in the finals, Macho Man Randy Savage, he would go on to become, to become icon. the IC champion, world champion, and just a legend all around. Icon, yeah. So it's like, JYD got these two pay-per-view victories in the, you know, 1985, and neither one of them amounted to anything. And that that's what irks me. But the other thing is, okay, let's... For a second here, those are actually, if you can hear that in the background, those are tornado sirens. So this this is a very special episode because you may just see a tornado just rip through this room right here. You know what? We'll, we'll beat it. You can't beat this tag team, baby. Bam! <laughs> we'll, we'll defeat the tornado. Um, but the other thing that kind of bugs me, okay, let's just go back to 85 for a second. Okay. You're Vince McMahon. Yeah. You are Vincent Kennedy McMahon. You are putting together this mega show, this super card, if you will. Now... Clearly, this is a do-or-die situation. He's put all his chips in the fucking table. If this is a success, boom, he can still go on to be McMahon and do McMahon things. If it collapses, it's over. The Empire you know, falls before it even gets a chance to rise. Now, your goal is to attract people. Not just the wrestling fans who are watching your product, but you want to get that mainstream audience. And you can't say he wasn't because he clearly was because the main event was so fucking mainstream, it's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. They were doing all the talk shows like that. Now, when you look at the card itself, and I'm not going to go through the entire thing, but this at the card, there are really only three matches with any legitimate buildup. The main event, the body slam challenge, and the women's title match. The tag titles, now I'll be honest, maybe it was. Noticed, have you noticed the WWE title, well, the WWF title was mm -hmm. never defended. It was a tag match. Yeah. Well, and, and it's okay. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not complaining about that. Well, it's still, the, the main event had story going into well, it. Well, well, over the past okay, almost stop. 29 this years. This is WrestleMania 1. Uh, there's no rules on WrestleMania 1. You're, you're, you're like these fuckets up here on the fucking internet. All right. So anyways, but those three matches, they smart. have... I can't help it. I'm going to smirk in your mouth. <laughs> um, but no, so those three matches actually have storyline. Okay. As far as I can tell, there was not really much storyline with the tag titles. I really don't know. I'll be honest with you. If you guys know, drop that shit down below in the comments section. Let me know. Educate my ass. I don't think there really was. Now, the four pre-card matches, uh, the, the undercard, if you will, they were just... Singles matches to showcase a certain individual, whether it be Teo Santana, King Kong Bundy, or Ricky Steamboat. Now, the fourth match on your hand was just because of who they knew, because David San Martino, his dad, like, how, how do we get Bruno to show up? Oh, well, gosh, show his son, fuck. But your brief beefcake's just like, hey, I'm Hogan's friend, they're like, fuck. Well, put them together, I guess. That's the only reason that match is even on the card. But you get this Intercontinental Tile match, and I'm thinking to myself, when I, when I read, like, the build-up to this thing, I'm thinking to myself, they already had a match built up. The Tito Santana Greg Valentine rematch. Like, how is that not the match here instead? How is the steel cage match between Tito Santana and Greg Valentine not on the card? That makes no fucking sense. In fact, this match that we're reviewing right now, the Greg Valentine uh, JYD match, that should have been a Saturday Night's main event a month before this show even came on the air. That should have happened then. Tito Santana came out, and I wouldn't care about the finish then, because, I mean, TV finishes are bullshit anyway. So, Tito Santana came out. Ran his mouth, interfered, whatever, and then they would have been like, well, fuck, you want to fight for the title? Let's do it. 
cage match. You get your rematch. And you know what? Junkyard Dog wouldn't have lost a spot because he could have been in the first match against the Executioner. Because yeah. And then guess what you're doing there? A, you showcase JYD in a short match, which is good for him. And guess what? His undefeated streak keeps going. In fact, I remember Executioner. It was Playboy by Rose, but whatever. He was the Executioner. Was undefeated as well. So you could have a whole undefeated versus undefeated match. You know, somebody's walking out, you know, with their first loss. I'm just saying, I don't see how they didn't book it like that. But whatever, this is what we get. Uh, like I said, the match itself, I didn't think it was that bad. I just feel like there's so much wasted potential of what could have been. And the last thing I'm going to run my mouth about, this, the last thing I promise, and I'm going to tag you in, is Tito Santana comes out. The match is over. The referee... He sees shoulders down, one, two, three, matches over, here's your belt, go home. And Tito Santana comes out, right? And he's just like, he puts his on the ropes. And the referee's like, okay, get back in here. What? We live in an age of replays, and we don't get that kind of shit half the no. time. So it's like, what? And then the commentary does try to save it there at the end. Like, after the match is over and it's going to the next match, they try to save it by going like, well, they confer or concurred with the judges at ringside. When the fuck has WWF ever had judges at ringside? They never do. They never do. This is not the NWA, motherfucker. This is WWF. No judges. So, I don't know. It, 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 they didn't show a scene where he was over there talking to the judges. They didn't show anything like that. It was literally just like, what? He has full the rope. Well, we're going to this match. Really? You're not going to question anybody else? It's like, from a realistic, you know, we're kayfabe this bitch. Realistically, he would have to know that Tito Santana and Greg Valentine don't like each other. So why would you take Tito's word for it? He clearly has an end for the hammer, so he could easily just be lying. I'm just, I'm just saying, from, even though I know he's good guy, bad guy, it, it, I would still be thinking like, well, wait a minute, dude, you don't even like this guy. I don't, I don't buy it. Who, who else? Who else saw that? You know, something like that. I would. It would have swallowed the pill a little bit more. Instead, we don't have that. We get. Put on the rope. But Greg did have his foot on the rope. He did have his foot on the rope. Ah, uh, referee didn't see that shit. The referee no, the ref didn't, didn't see, see that shit. But so, everybody in the building seen it. Well, you know what? We don't have time to survey <laughs> twenty thousand plus. So guess For what? JYD loses first loss, and Greg Valentine gets a decent win out of it. Instead, no, we get. JYD's protected for whatever reason. Like, did they have plans for him at some time? Yeah. Did they really go at one point like, well, he can't wrestle. We gotta protect him. But let's protect him anyways, because fuck it. We, we may use him for a world title push someday. No. He was never going to be top draw ever. The fact that he goes on the Wind Wrestling Classic, that's a different conversation for a different day. We won't bore you with it now. But that blows my mind right there. That's just ridiculous beyond ridiculous. I mean, it's just insane. But whatever... I don't know. And you, I must say, dude, Valentine looks good here. Like, literally. Because, like, when I think of Greg Valentine, I think of him, like, late 80s, early 90s. He's got a bit of a punch. He's still a great wrestler. And can still go. Motherfucker's in there, like, what was it, Royal Rumble 90, 91? Do like, last, like, 30-something minutes. He can do it. He's the, he's the fucking hammer. But I I still think of him like this Alice shape looking guy. But here, dude, like, he, he's in shape. He's toned up and shit. So, all right. Tag me in, or tag you in. Get me out of here. Go ahead. What do you think about the match, Steve? Uh, the match, it wasn't a classic, but Greg, I think Greg the Hammer Valentine pretty much carried the match for the majority, for majority of it. Yeah. Because I don't think, I don't think JYD could, could, could do what Greg, Greg has done and yeah. what he can do. Oh, I agree. You know? Yeah. And, and, I. JYD was more more or less like a like a mouthpiece. He was a gimmick. Yeah. You know, gimmick. You, he basically got put over because of his character. You know what I mean? Because of his speaking skills. Of course, he'd go. Of course, he'd go on and win the wrestling classic, which there was a few guys in there that I wish would 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 have won it, but it's it is what it is. Like half the fucking tournament would have been better than whatever. Go ahead. <laughs> but anyways, um, JYD would he would he. Would he after after the wrestling classic would go on to 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 wrestle um, Harley Race at WrestleMania three and then go on to the NWA and I think he wrestled Sting. I no, Ric Flair once I was, the NWA title. I'm just now watching NWA on my other <laughs> channel now, so yeah, I have no idea. Yeah. Uh, Greg the Hammer Valentine um, stayed with WWE for for a long period of time and went on to be, went on to team up with um, Bruce Beefcake yeah. to become the dream team and <clears throat> that's 
about it. I'm gonna roll you in real quick. But this match, like, what do you think about this match? Uh, I'd say I give it as far as like the match. I'd say I'd give it around like a a three. A three. The most a out three. of three out of ten. I'd give it a three. three out of ten. Okay. So you didn't care for it? No, I didn't. Okay. Really care for it at all. <laughs> I, I I I did like the bump Jimmy Hart did, being being thrown over the uh thrown off the apron. That was. That was pretty, pretty, pretty cool. I, I, I didn't think managers w could really take bumps. <laughs> and, uh, would be willing enough to take yeah. bumps onto concrete. At least old managers would. They didn't mind. They, they, they were troopers back then. Yep. Um. Which I think something else here. Um. <clears throat> but yeah, I, I really didn't see the very ending of the match. Yeah. He Santana literally comes came over, out. and I'm telling him like, yeah. you know, how we're gonna do this layout. He's like, wait, Santana came back out? I'm like, did you finish the match? He's like, yeah, they rang the bell and I went home. And I was like, well, he did what Greg Valentine was trying to do. He was like, match is <laughs> over, let's get out of here. <laughs> and he got counted out too. He's walking back to the locker room. The referee's like, nine, ten, he's, he's out, that's it. Gone, yeah. I do think it's funny that, uh, and then we're going to wrap this up, that uh, the pre-match interviews, you get, I don't, I don't remember who went first, but they're like in the same room. Like, you got Mean Gene right there. He's like, talking to this guy, blah, blah, blah. Okay, well, thank you very much. And he goes away and goes, now over here. And I was like, they're in the same room. Like, these guys hate each other while they're wrestling. Like, I would be healing that shit up and, like, just be like, and that pussy over there. <laughs> but he never does that. They, oh like, they're, they're talking strategy going into the match. And you're like, you know, he's right there. He's listening to every word you're saying right now. He knows what you're going to do. And Vince McMahon, that's, that's all I'm going to say about that. Vince McMahon. Uh, Kayfabe. Yeah, it's a joke, whatever. Uh, but anyways, uh, but yeah, so there we go. Uh, that was the first WrestleMania match. Let us know at home, what did you guys think about uh, this match? I said the first WrestleMania match. I'm going to say our first uh, mid-card Mania match. Yeah. Obviously it wasn't the first WrestleMania match. Uh, but, you know, our first uh, mid-card Mania match. So let us know at home what you guys thought about this match. Do you, do you agree with him? Just hate it. You agree with me where you think it's okay, <laughs> but the ending sucked. Uh, either way, maybe you fucking loved it. Maybe you're just like, Put this on a JYD DVD. They don't have a JYD DVD, do they? No, it'll eventually happen. But yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> Anyways, uh, drop those comments down below. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in and watching. Uh, tune in next week. We're going to head over to the Wrestling Classic. So, uh, yeah, got some good times over there, I'm sure. Uh, yeah, one of the worst overall pay-per-views. There's a couple good matches, but as far as a, a pay-per-view on a whole, I'm scared what match we're going to get. So. All right, well, guys, I'm Daniel. Uh, Steven. And uh, yeah, we're out of here. So, till next time.